except me. <laughs> be opening your Bibles this evening to the New Testament book of Matthew in chapter 16. We'll be there in just a moment. We've been studying on Sunday evenings this year about who we are or should be. And we've been looking at different uh, parts of uh, our relationship with God and, uh, and inserting them in, uh, into that blank between who we are or should be. And tonight we're looking at the good stewards. We are good stewards of God. God expects this of us. Now we don't use that word very often. Uh, in fact, uh, generally whenever uh, it's used, it's uh, referring to uh, someone who is in charge of uh, of a customer care or customer relationship on, uh, on a ship or, or, or maybe on a train or, or on uh, some of the, the big uh, uh, aircraft, uh, especially those that are traveling a long ways, maybe going overseas, and, uh, and uh, the people are all on there for quite some time. And, and that conveys part of, of the concept that God is talking about, but, uh, but certainly not uh, to the depth that God uh, reveals this to us. So I want you to begin with me, if you will, in Matthew chapter 16, beginning in verse 24. And, and listen to what Jesus is saying here. We're going to look at a couple of verses tonight that are, are very familiar uh, to us, and, and then a couple that are, are not so familiar. Well, begin with me, if you will. Matthew chapter 16, beginning in verse 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man is going, you know, is, is going to come in the glory of his Father with his angels and will then repay every man according to his deeds." There's a judgment coming. It is coming. The truth is we're nearer to that time right now than we were this morning. There is a time of answering. And we will answer. And, and, and this whole reference that we just, we just looked at is really talking about our relationship to God as a steward. As a good steward of God. If, if we're going to be a follower of Jesus Christ, then, then uh, we're familiar with, with what he says there. We should take up our cross and follow him. Luke chapter 9 verse 23 says we should take up our cross daily and follow him. And so there, there is an emphasis there in, in, in Luke's uh, uh, account. But the, the real question is, what are you willing to exchange in this life for the well-being of your soul and the life that is to come? What will a man give in exchange for his soul? What's it worth to you? What's it worth to you to have what you want or what you think you want? What you think you want. What's, what's it worth to you? The payday's coming. The payday is coming. And when Jesus comes and renders to everyone according to our works, he won't make any mistakes. Now, we might make mistakes in, in uh, assessing other people's lives and in, in looking at what they do and what they, uh, what they have failed to do or how they've done it or, or whether it meets uh, to uh, the standard that, uh, that we think it should or not. But Jesus won't make any mistakes. It's going to be perfect judgment. And that time is coming. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. One, another, another one that is very familiar to us. Listen to what he's saying here. And, and uh, we'll, we'll try, to hear, try to hear what he is saying. Not just what we thought, but what he's really saying. Let's begin at verse 14. It's not on here, but we'll get to verse 15 real quickly. Remind them of these things. God's gracious. Well, that's what he's been talking about. God's gracious. Even whenever we recognize our weakness and, and we, we stumble and we fail and, and we don't measure up and, and, and uh, we're, we're struggling and we recognize the sin that, that is still in our life and we say with the Apostle Paul out of Romans chapter 7, O wretched man that I am, who will save me from, from this? We need to remember that we do have a Savior. 
And he loved us enough to give his own life and, and to, to pour out his blood as an offering for us. And even when we deny ourselves, Jesus won't deny us. It's amazing. It's amazing what he's talking about. The, the power of grace right before this. Remind them of these things. And solemnly charge them in the presence of God not to wrangle about words which is useless and leads to the ruin of the hearers. But instead, he said, don't, don't be like the world. We talked about words this morning. We talked about promises this morning. And, and, and how that some people say, oh, they're just words. They're just words. No, they're not. No, they're not. No, they're not. Words are important. By our words, we'll be justified. By our words, we'll be condemned. That's what Jesus says to us. So listen to what he says here. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed accurately handling the word of truth. Be diligent. To present yourself to God as a workman. We talked about that two weeks ago. A workman who has no reason to be ashamed. You don't have to hide your works. You, you, don't, you don't have to have to get in the back of the line. You don't have to duck down hoping that, that you won't be seen by the Lord. But, but being able to stand there and, and, and even though you realize that the very best that we can offer, we, we're still unprofitable servants. But there's no reason for us to be ashamed before God. He's talking about our confidence that we have in the grace of God, in the grace and the blood of Jesus Christ. But one who does not need to be ashamed, but notice what he says here at the end, accurately handling the word of truth. That's being a good steward. Accurately handling the word of truth. And he's put it right here. This is, this is it. We've had it all of our life. Most of us, or many of us, uh, see, let me see, how many of us grew up in the church? <laughs> All right, then I was right, just the, the first thing I said. Most of us, most of us have, have grown up in, in Bible classes, in, in studies, and in, in I don't know how many sermons you've heard me preach. I, you probably do. Uh, but uh, but uh, it, we, we, we've heard it over and over again. We, we know it, but yet then there are times whenever we struggle with it. And, and I'm referring to what's coming up uh, if the Lord allows time to continue on uh, just this next weekend. We, we care is, is on us. It's not something that we're talking about in December about, well, you know, we're really seriously thinking about doing this. It, it's here. It, it's, it's here. It's, it's on top of us. And if you haven't already volunteered... Do it. Do it. It's okay. Well, I, I might mess up. It's okay. It's okay. I have asked God's forgiveness so many times of, of the mess-ups in my life. And I, I look back over, over the years of preaching, and I, and I see people that I, I loved then and I love now, and, and I, I studied with them, and, and, and uh, they're still where they were then. I'm going, if, if, if I had just known then what I know now, would it have made a difference then? Maybe. But we can't do that with ourselves. Because we're, we're not back there. We're, we're here. We're here. And, and if you don't mess up, if you don't mess up somewhere, it's going to make me wonder about you. Maybe you're one of those angels that are visiting that we, that we just don't know about. But listen to what he's saying. Uh, uh, accurately handling the word of truth. This is the stewardship that he's talking about. He's not talking about answering for money. Now, now that may be a, a small part of it, but, but, but certainly the biggest part of it is doing what you can do. That's so powerful here. Handling correctly. The Word of God. And you make sure that I do that. I know that you do. You talk to me about it. God expects that of you as well. So go with me if you will. We're going to keep looking. Accurately handling the Word of Truth. And in, in fact, when, when he's talking about accurately handling the Word of Truth, this, this accurate 
he's talking, two, two possibilities here. He said, we're going we're to try to go a little bit deeper than, than just memorizing this uh, out of the King James, which, which most of us did. You know, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that does not need to be ashamed or, or needeth. I, see, I, didn't, I messed up because I, I came, up, came over to NIV a little bit there. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth, see, that's the King James, needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Let's go deeper. Two possibilities here. In the analogy of, of, of the language that's going on here, he's talking about cut it straight. Cut it straight. And Jesus talked about that whenever he was talking about the farmer that, that is going out to plow. Uh, he said whenever he, he puts his hands to the plow, he does not do what? He does not do what? He doesn't look back. He doesn't look back. I did that. I did that. The first time I plowed, I did that. I, in fact, I did it so incredibly well, looking back, not the plowing, looking back, I just, because I wanted to see what it was doing. I had a partner in a farm. He was a deacon in the church and the president of the local bank. And he had called me that night and he said, so what did you do? We didn't have cell phones. He, he, he knew I'd uh, taken the day off and I was working out on, on the place that we shared. And, and he said, so, so what did you, you get done today? And I said, I plowed 40 acres. He said, you did? And I said, yeah, it's ready now for them to come in and, and, and sow seed on it. And, and uh, he, he went out that night in his pickup truck and looked and he spent the rest of the night plowing it again. Because he didn't want someone to think that he had done what I did. <laughs> I was so proud of it, but the, you know, the, the, the rows looked like that. And he's going, no, no. And when I went out there the next time and I saw how straight they were, I thought, what in the world happened? What in the, he, didn't, he didn't get on to me about it. So, so the, the, the first thing here is whenever we're handling God's Word, when we're handling, cut it straight. Cut it straight. Don't look back. Just stay, stay with it. And even what we've talked about the last two weeks, or, 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 or actually further back than that, when, it, when we were looking at Joshua, and then even this morning, whenever we were looking at what the king, uh, when, when they appoint a king, he is to write the word of God himself, sit down with a scroll and write it with his own hand in the, in the presence of, uh, of the Levitical priesthood. And, and as he's, he's doing that, it's going to benefit him and he's to read it, he's to think about it, and have it with him all the time, so that he doesn't turn to the left or to the right. You see, this, this, this is a, a concept that God wants us to get down. And then God talking to Joshua, he says, keep my commandments, don't turn to the left hand or to the right. Cut it straight. And that's what this is talking about. That's what this is talking about right here. Second possibility, which really goes along with the first, is the warning that God will give us later whenever, whenever He's talking in 2 Peter chapter 3. He says, don't twist my word. He said, some people do that. Some people do that. And, and they twist it to their own destruction. Don't, don't twist it. Don't change it. And so when he's talking about accurately handling or handling aright the Word of God, he's saying, make sure that your rows are straight. Don't go to the left or to the right because God has said what He wants us to know. And, and He's a perfect communicator. We're the ones that sometimes struggle with, with the communication, not God. So don't turn to the left or to the right with this and, and, and don't change it. Don't make it say something it doesn't say. Don't leave something out if it does. Just simply say what it says. Now maybe that means that you put it in your own words as, as you're talking to people. But you haven't changed it. Don't, don't change it. Don't twist it. And make sure that your rows are straight. Handling correctly, accurately. And I want you to go with me now to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. We, we, we don't often turn there. But I want you to look at uh, and listen to what God says in just one verse here. The Apostle Paul, God breathing through him the Word of God. And, and listen to what he says. Let a man regard us in this manner. He says, this is how I want people to see us. And they did a good job. The Apostles did. They did a good job with this. 
He says, let a man regard us in this manner as servants of Christ and stewards of the mystery of God. Wow. That's all I can think of. Wow. He's, you know, of, of, every, of everything, that, uh, all the possibilities in, in Paul's life, he says, I want you to think about me this way. I want to be known this way. Whenever somebody says Paul, then I want to be known as a good steward of God's Word. That's how I want to be known. Church, that ought to be our, our number one goal as we move out into our community. That we will be known as stewards, good stewards of the Word of God. You see, God talks about that more than He does talking about a, a, being a good steward of money. I mean, th this, this is what it boils down to. You know, money, money is, is part of life, but that's not where God's emphasis is. I want to be known this way. I want to be known this way. And if we are known this way, and, and if, if we're truly confident in, in living this way, as, as we're cutting it, cutting it straight, as we're handling it accurately, then we'll be able to say to people, not in an arrogant way, but with, with so much confidence, that you can follow me because I'm following Christ. And we've not arrived till we're able to say that. Follow me because I'm following Christ. Wow. Paul said, I want to be known in this regard. He said, if somebody looks at me, if somebody's talking about me, and they say, let me tell you about Paul. Paul is a straight shooter. Paul, he, 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 makes his row, he makes his rows straight. He, if, he's, if he's building a road, it, it's not you know, twisting and turning. It's a straight road. He hasn't turned to the left or to the right. I want to be known this way, as a good steward of the mystery of God. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, another place we don't often go. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 10. Now in, in your Bibles, I don't know if your, your Bible will have a, a words in italics, but anytime we see a word in italics, it means that word has been added by translators, hopefully for clarity. And, and sometimes that, that does help give us the direction of, of, of the, the flow of the language itself. And, but there are also times when, when it it may kind of bump up against other things, and, and, and maybe, maybe it shouldn't even be there. Maybe we'll just leave it like, like it, it was given to us. But they added a word here, and, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that, and, and we're not going to worry about it. But listen to what he says. In, in 1 Peter chapter 4, and verse 10, he says that each one has received a special gift. The word special is in italics. That means it's been added. Just, let's just leave it out tonight. They should leave it out, because if man can add it, man can take it away. Alright? Is that okay? Now, if it's God that's doing, that's put it there, then don't you touch it. <laughs> but if man's put it there, and, and man did put it there, so I'm going to take it away tonight. And, 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 and that, that's okay, because I'm, I'm just a man too. And so listen to what he says. As each one of you has received a gift. And we're not talking about miraculous things. We're not talking about miraculous things here. We're, we're talking about the, the gift of God's grace that, that, that God has, has given each one of us. He's made us all different. We're not all alike. And, and, and we, do have, we do have different abilities. I don't doubt for a minute that whenever we get to heaven that I'm going to see Patty Taylor and, and uh, uh, Tony Hassett in the kitchen. Now, they're, they're going to have a, a bazillion angels working for them in there, and, and they'll have it all, and, and they'll be calm and cool. They won't have to turn on the big exhaust airplane fan, and, and none, none of that will have to happen. But, but, I mean, they're so good at that. And, and they make you, and whenever they do something, did, oh, don't you miss her? Oh, I do too. I do too. Wow. She's having fun, though. <laughs> 
So, so let's, be, let's be happy for Patty. She's having a blast. And, and, uh, and, and you know, that, that's, a, that's a good thing. But, but just as an example, whenever they, whenever they do a banquet, and, and now whenever, when, whenever uh, Tony does it, one, you, you feel special just showing up. It doesn't even have to be for you. I came to the, to the banquet honoring our seniors, graduating seniors, and I felt special. I, I walk in, and, and I feel special. I'm not a graduating senior. Now, I am a senior, but I'm not a graduating senior. Make you feel special. Using, using the ability that God gave. He says, as each one has received the gift. Everybody's got something that you can do. Employ it. I like that. Employ it in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. See, what you're doing has a reflection upon the very Word that God has given us. Now, one of the miraculous gifts that, that God talked about, and we, we spent uh, last year talking about the Holy Spirit of God, and, and one of the things that we talked about was, was the gift of hospitality. You know, making, making peel, people feel special, making them feel welcome. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're having them all into your house, but wherever you are, that you are the servant and you're making that person feel like they're really, really welcome. Is Richard here tonight? Yes, sorry for overlooking you. Richard, you're welcome here. Anytime, every time we meet. Richard Smith's one of our brothers in Christ. He's had some problems. All of us have had some problems. But one of the things he was asking me yesterday, he was saying, would it be okay for me to come? Are people going to look at me like, well, you've messed up again. Like maybe he shouldn't be here? Oh, if you ever do that to somebody, shame on you. Not on you, Richard, but shame on them. Shame on them. This is what God is saying right here. What you're doing it has a reflection upon the truth of God. How you're living has a reflection upon the truth of God. And either it's going to make it more palatable for people, it's going to make it easier for them to deal with the struggles that they're facing in life because they, they see through you that there's hope at the other end. That there, there is light. I tell young, young uh, families... Uh, uh, even, uh, Gary and Donna, I could tell you all about it. I'm, uh, you, you've got one still in university, and you've got one that just got married, and, and so right now your bank account probably looks like a big goose egg. And that's okay, because there is life after the, our kids get out of university and after they all get married. And, and, and there is, it's not a light at the end of the tunnel. There, there is life, and, and, it, and it's fun. And, and you know, gear up for the next level. It, it's, it's okay. And, and we need to let people know that whenever they come in to our assembly, they need to know that there is hope. That there is hope. And it doesn't make any difference how many times you stumble and fall that the rest of us are right here saying, it's okay, let me help you get up. I know I frustrated some parents, maybe a little bit, and, and, but it, and it's never stopped them from bringing their little ones over to our house. And they, they come over to our house, well, it's just me and Judy there. I mean, how messed up can a house get with just, well, with me there? I, okay, forget, forget what I was going to say there. But, the, but the, the, the children come over, it, it's not like it was whenever we had three little ones that, that were everywhere all the time. And, and we, we, hung, we hung up the plaque on the wall that, that said, uh, uh, whatever it said, about dust and, and dirty dishes and dirty clothes. It said, oh, you can all go away, I've got children today. You know, and I thought, boy, that's cool. But, so they, they come over and, and one, one, of the, one of the little children, and they, they spilled some water on the kitchen floor. And, and I, I don't even remember now who it was. And I watched as, as the mother went, oh! <gasps> And I'm going, no, it's okay. It's okay. It's just a floor. It's just a floor. And, and you know, the, the little child is starting to, you know, uh, uh, you know, and so I poured some of mine out. And I said, so now we got two messes here. And I got right down there, got them a little towel, and I got a towel, and so we're cleaning it up there together. That, that's what we need to do with people when they come. You, did you make a mess? 
Well, let me help you clean that up. Man, I've made messes. I've made messes bigger than that. It's okay. That, that's, that's what we're doing with our gift. Our gift, our gift actually, stay with me here, now don't, don't leave because that's, this is what it's saying. Our gift can be an enhancement to the Word of God. Our gifts are not superior to what God has done, but God has given us whatever ability it may be. Maybe just to walk up and smile and say, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. I think I told you all about us being on vacation whenever our children were all, uh, they're all, I think a couple of them were in school, elementary school, and, and we went to the World's Fair in, in New Orleans. And, and on our way back, uh, we, we knew that we were going to be in, in one of those coastal cities, and I, I don't even remember, and that's good, uh, because if you lived there and went to church there, I don't want you to, to think, boy, he's talking about me now. Uh, but, and, and we planned on, on spending the night in this one town and going to church. We'd even looked it up. That was before computers, so we'd looked it up in the phone book and found it and, and uh, called ahead and found out what time they were going to meet, be meeting. And, and that night, the bottom fell out. I mean, it rained like 14 or 15, 16 inches that night, shook the, the motel, and, and, and we think we're, maybe we're going to be in a hurricane, and got up the next morning, and there's like a foot and a half of water in all the streets. And so we pull up at the church building, and they had a little drive through and, and so I, I told Judy, I said, you and the children could go ahead and go in. I'll go park the van. Their parking lot's full. There's no street parking for about three blocks. And so I pulled down three blocks away, and it's still raining so hard. And I told Judy, I said, y'all go on inside, wait for me right inside the door, and I'll be right there. And I don't have an umbrella. I gave them to Judy. And I thought, I'm going to look like a drenched frog by the time I get there. So I get a big black trash bag. You always carry a big black trash bag if you have little ones in the car with you. You just always do that. And so I got one, I tore a hole in it so I could see out, and I cover, it covered me down to about here, and I just jumped out of the van after I parked it, and I ran through all the water, even on the sidewalk, and I ran through the water, and I go through the doors right behind where Judy went through, and I, there's a second set of doors, and I go through that door, and I'm taking the black trash bag off, and I notice Judy and all three children are just standing there kind of like that, and they've surrounded me, and they're all kind of looking at me as I take it. We're at the front of the building. We came in this door right over here. And they've already started service and everybody in the whole place is looking at Judy and these children. And then I come busting in and take this trash bag off. They probably felt good that I took it off. And instead of thinking, well, terrorists have shown up. And then we sat down on, on like the second row and we participate. The children sing and we contribute. We take the Lord's Supper and everything. And after service, Judy says, well, I'm going to take the, the girls to the bathroom. And she had seen one between the, the doors. But she didn't run in. She walked in. And, and uh, she said, but I didn't see a men's room. And so I walk over with our little boy to the communion table. And here's like eight or ten men standing there talking after service. And I said, uh, men's room. And one of the men just points to the back. Didn't say a word. Just pointed to the back. So I walked all the way through their building. And, and w went and, and then came back. And when I went and got the van. And we all got in. I said, did you notice anything unusual? We didn't talk bad about the church in front of our children. Never did that. I said, you notice anything unusual? And Judy said, uh, did anyone speak to you? I tell you what, it wasn't like they didn't know we were there. <laughs> I mean, they knew we were there. Everybody knew we were there. And really, we don't look too bad as a family. But no one spoke to us. No one. And I thought, that's terrible. I wonder how another visitor would feel if they came. Now, was I going to quit going to church because of that? No. So I wrote them a letter. And I said, in a, in a nice, nice letter. It wasn't a mean letter. And I said, you know, we're visiting there. And no one spoke. I got a letter back from them. Now I know why no one spoke to me. They didn't like strangers. And they said, You're, you must be one of those people that are always criticizing everybody. No, don't react. Don't react. Be careful with that one. Our gift, our gift has been given to enhance the manifold grace of God. 
Let it work. Let it work. And for that to happen, we've got to work on ourselves first. Well done. That's what Jesus said to the, you know, Matthew 25, the one with five talents, one with two talents, to both of them. He says, well done. Why? Because they had used, they did what they could. They did what they could. They didn't do the impossible, they just did what they could. They didn't complain, they didn't go bury their talent. They they weren't pulling on Jonah saying, nobody likes those people and you want me to go over there? See, Job and God, or, or Jonah and God already had that discussion before he ever left. Before he ever left home, he and God had already had this discussion. He said, nobody likes them. I don't like them. And God's answer is, we don't know. Maybe he said, so? Nobody likes them. So? Do you know what all they've been doing? So? Are you going to tell me that they don't need the Gospel? Are you going to tell me that those people... I mean, those people in Nineveh needed it more than anybody else. Oh, we get upset what people are we're seeing on the news, don't we? I got upset. Harvesting baby parts? Oh. Oh, no. But if anybody needs the Gospel today, they do. Are you hearing what God's saying here? You've received a gift. Use it to enhance The manifold grace of God. Don't use it to beat people up. They know it's wrong. We're not talking about dumb people. Everything is to bring people closer to God. And I think we can all do that. Good steward? Are you? Who we are? We're good stewards. We're good stewards of what God has entrusted into our care. And this is number one on God's list. This is number one. This is what He's entrusted into our care. A lot of other things below that, but this is number one. Good steward, that's who we are, or we should be. So, take a deep breath this week and think about this. And let's be good stewards. Let's be good stewards. And let's be known in our community for handling this book correctly. Okay? I know we can do it. If you need help tonight, come right now while we stand and sing. Lest I forget thy thorn crowned brow, lead me to Calvary. Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thine.